This video is part of uh, the supply chain management class. This particular video is about managing business to business relationships in the supply chain. We are going to address what I think are key relationship management uh, concepts um, that uh, help us understand um, relationship dynamics in the supply chain. First, let's uh, be a little bit ambitious and uh, let's try to summarize in one slide the last 100 or 120 years of marketing. At the beginning of the 1900s, marketing was concerned with uh, market transactions uh, in an agrarian economy that is uh, supply and demand uh, meeting. At that point, the key coordination mechanism for the market was price. And in 1937, um, an economist, Coase, stated that price is uh, an expensive coordination mechanism for the market. And what he meant, uh, and this um, uh, story uh, trying to depict that scenario, uh, I haven't talked to, to Co, so I don't know whether he actually thought about this, is that I had apples to sell, uh, I set a price, I came to you to offer those apples at that price, the price was too high, so then I got stuck with all the apples I had, um, I didn't have enough money to buy other products that others uh, had to sell. So each one stayed with their own products that they grew themselves and there was no transactions. While if um, the price was right, then we all would enjoy the products that everyone was producing. Uh, so, so that market is, is inefficient. Uh, there's spoilage of the products. So that's why price is an expensive coordination mechanism. Um, keep this concept in mind because uh, it's surprising how nowadays we still use price as the main coordination mechanism. Anyway, let's fast forward like 50 years and what is called the functionalist view of marketing was developed. And the functionalist view of marketing is around the four marketing piece. And I know that now people say there are more, but four piece is simple enough to make the point and uh, we will all uh, understand. But the four marketing piece are product, price, promotion, and place. And the functionalist view is that every time a customer uh, intended to buy a product, um, the customer would do like an equation, like a weight of each of the four P's. And if the four P's were in harmony, if they fit, if the price was right, the product was available, the product had the features that I liked, then um, uh, the customer would decide to purchase the product. Um, at that point, it's called functionalist view because each transaction was a function of the four Ps. And at that point, there was no assumption that there was a prior um, like or dislike from the customer in terms of that product. That's why, again, fast forward 10, 15, 20 years more, uh, Customers started to real, um, scholars started to recognize that customers, after uh, having executed multiple transactions, then there was a latent relationship established uh, with the product or the company. Um, and this is when the concept of customer retention came about. And probably you heard that idea that is uh, easier or less expensive to sell something to an existing customer. Than, sell, than selling the same thing to a new customer. From customer retention, then around the 80s, both in, in the Nordic School of Marketing and, um, and, uh, and in the US and in Europe, uh, the, the idea of long-term relationships uh, came about. And, and there are a couple of very interesting tricks in, in, in long-term relationships. By definition, uh, long-term relationships or managing long-term relationships is about establishing, maintaining, and developing relationships, being profitable, being profitable. They are not saying generating revenue, being profitable, and both, being, both companies being profitable. So that the objectives of the parties involved, involved are met. 
And again, this is an interesting twist because uh, this definition recognizes that the objectives of each uh, party involving the relationship might not be exactly the same, but they are they fit. They fit with their individual objectives uh, in terms of profitability. Since mid 2000s, the idea is the focus on service. Um, for, for, for several years, it has been viewed that service is a key differentiator. And uh, what's interesting about the focus on what is called the, ser the service dominant logic for marketing is that uh, service requirements are discovered as the business relationship evolves. So I understand more about you and you understand more about me. And, and the fact that we understand each other, then we can develop or tailor or, or um, um, uh, create uh, service components that go together with the prior offerings that we, that we had. The boundary is, or the, 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 the frontier is understanding that, that the physical product is it's a means of transportation of uh, the service um, that that they that, that they render. Now we should not forget the marketing concept because I believe that now um, we kind of lost track of the importance of profitability. Only the CEO of the company is concerned with ultimate profitability. And, and, and functions are more focused on their functional objectives and, and it's harder to get a connection to, to profitability. However, what is important is that even in the marketing concept, um, I, 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 say, I say even in the marketing concept because it seems that now marketing is more focused about market share uh, or generating revenue if we are thinking about sales. Uh, however, the marketing concept was already um, integrated enough and, uh, and I see many not even uh, remembering or having heard what the marketing concept is. So the marketing concept is three things. One is customer satisfaction and, uh, and customer satisfaction, um, it's easier said than, than, than put in practice because there are many constituents uh, of satisfaction. Uh, it's, it's the channel, it's the end customer, it's the consumer. Um, we can even think about satisfaction of suppliers, right? Because if we want the best from our suppliers, uh, then, then we also need to think about then them being satisfied with doing business with us. The last element is, the second, the second element is integrated effort. And by integrated effort, the, the, the genesis of this is the four marketing piece. Um, the concept of integrated effort has evolved substantially and now integrated effort means the, integrating the effort of, of, of the work that is done in all the functions inside, inside the company. The last element is profitability. Note that there it doesn't say revenue, it doesn't say cost reduction, it doesn't say market share, it doesn't say cash to cash cycle, it doesn't say anything but profitability because we eat with profitability. And profitability means maximizing profitability in the long term and then minimizing the total cost uh, that uh, we are having for serving the customer at the level that we promised. And these four elements are connected. There's no way of sustaining uh, the, the implementation of the marketing concept is the if these four elements are not uh, in, interconnected. Changing gears a little bit, um, I'm always fascinated, I have always been fascinated with trust and commitment uh, in business to business relationships. And, and, and what's interesting is because, uh, to me it's interesting because everyone understand the value of having uh, trust in a relationship because uh, it's it's like 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 a, like a lubricant to a lot of things. Trust makes things uh, sm uh, move uh, um, in a in a faster, in a more smooth uh, manner. Um, however, 
when you ask how that trust was developed, that's harder to, to get an explanation for. So trust starts small. And trust starts with a customer placing an order to a supplier and trusting that the supplier is going to deliver on the promise. And, and the supplier delivering the, pro- the product or service and trusting that the customer will pay the supplier adequately. So, so the, the, the other side of the coin of trust is commitment. And given that trust starts small, then commitment also starts small. Now, when the first cycle is observed, then, then it could, more trust could be poured into the relationship. And as a consequence, more commitment is demonstrated. So now I guess you get the picture. Trust and commitment is like a cycle, a spiral, that gets uh, larger and larger. Now, what I find interesting about this is that, so the story is that I was uh, teaching an undergrad class about trust and commitment in a business to business context. And I wasn't sure whether they were understanding or not. And uh, one kid raised his hand and he says, my grandmother says that you build trust by the gram and you lose trust by the kilogram. So that's a thousand grams to a kilogram. So the idea is you build trust slowly and you lose uh, trust very quickly when uh, um, there there is a problem in the relationship.